In this video, we're going to go through the solutions to the questions on differentiation with gradients, tangents, and normals. As usual, you can find a copy of the questions in this video's description. So for this first question, we're going to differentiate. So we'll do dy by dx. And if you differentiate x cubed, you'll get 3x squared. Differentiate minus 5x squared, you get minus 10x. Differentiate 7x, you get plus 7. And the constant will differentiate to give 0. Now we need to substitute in the point x equals 3. So at x equals 3, dy by dx equals 3 lots of 3 squared. Take away 10 lots of 3, plus 7. 3 lots of 3 squared gives you 27. Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. And then plus 7, and this gives you a final answer of 4. For this question, same approach. So we'll do dy by dx. Differentiate x to the 4 gives you 4x to the 3. Differentiate 4x is just plus 4, and then we'll substitute in x equals negative 2. So at this point, dy by dx equals 4 lots of negative 2 cubed plus 4. Negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8, times that by 4, negative 32. And negative 32 add 4 gives you negative 28. It's the same idea for this one as well, but we're going to rewrite the equation. So where you've got that 3 over x, we'll write that as 3x to the power negative 1. So when we come to do dy by dx, if you differentiate the 8, that's a constant, so that goes to 0, and then we do negative 1 times negative 3, which is actually a positive 3, and then x to the minus 2, which we could rewrite as 3 over x squared. Now we substitute in the point x equals 2, so at this point dy by dx equals 3 over 2 squared, and of course 2 squared is just 4, so it's 3 over 4. For this question, the equation of the curve is in the form a bracket squared. Remember when you have a bracket squared, that's just the bracket times by itself. We could expand this, so x squared times x squared is x to the power 4. x squared times plus 1 is plus x squared. Plus 1 times x squared is plus x squared. And 1 times 1 is just plus 1. We can simplify the x squared terms here, and we'd end up with y equals x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 1. Now that we have the equation of the curve in this form, it becomes easier for us to differentiate. So dy by dx equals, x to the power 4 will differentiate to give 4x cubed, the plus 2x squared will differentiate to give plus 4x, and the plus 1 will differentiate to give 0. Now we need to find the gradient when x equals 1, so at x equals 1, dy by dx equals 4 lots of 1 cubed plus 4 lots of 1. Now 4 lots of 1 cubed is 4, and 4 lots of 1 is also 4, so 4 add 4 gives you 8. For this question, we need to work out the x value when the rate of change of y with respect to x is equal to negative 2. Remember, the rate of change of y with respect to x is just another way of saying the gradient function dy by dx. So if we work out dy by dx, 3x squared will differentiate to give 6x, minus 5x will differentiate to give minus 5, and the plus 1 constant term gives you 0. Now we want this to equal negative 2. So we write a new line, 6x minus 5 equals negative 2. To solve this, you just add 5 to both sides, so 6x equals 3, and then divide both sides by 6, then x would equal 1 half. So the answer to the question is 1 half. For this question, we need to do the same approach. We're going to rewrite the equation so that the fraction's not there, so we'll rewrite that last part as negative 4, x to the power negative 2. When you differentiate 3x, you get 3, and then we'll do negative 2 times negative 4 to get a positive 8, and reduce the power of x down from negative 2 to negative 3. And then rewrite this back in its fraction form, 8 over 3 cubed. Now we want this to be equal to 2, so we have 3 plus 8 over x cubed equals 2. To solve this, I would times both sides by x cubed. On the left hand side, we'll get 3x cubed, when we times 8 over x cubed by x cubed, the x cubes cancel, and we've just got 8. And then on the right hand side, 2 times x cubed is 2x cubed. If you now take away 2x cubed from both sides, on the left you'll just have x cubed plus 8, and on the right you'll have 0. Now subtract 8 from both sides, on the left you'll have x cubed, on the right you'll have negative 8. And then just cube root both sides, which will give you x equals negative 2. So the solution for this one is negative 2. For this question, same approach, so we'll do dy by dx. 2x cubed will differentiate to give you 6x squared. 
negative 3x squared will differentiate to give you negative 6x, and negative 12x differentiates to give negative 12. And again, we want this to be equal to 24, so we'll write 6x squared minus 6x minus 12 equals 24. If you subtract 24 from both sides, you'll get 6x squared minus 6x minus 36, and on the right hand side equals 0. Now we can divide both sides of this equation by 6, since I noticed there's a common factor of 6 for all terms on the left hand side. If you divide the left hand side by 6, you get x squared minus x minus 6, and on the right hand side 0 divided by 6 is still 0. We can factorise this quadratic quite easily, it would be x take 3 and x plus 2 equals 0 which gives us two solutions this time, so the first bracket gives us the solution x equals 3, and the second bracket gives us x equals negative 2. To start this one we're going to rewrite the equation again, where we've got 4 over x, we're going to write that as 4x to the power negative 1. Then we can differentiate, so dy by dx, 6x will differentiate to give 6, and the 4x to the power negative 1, we do negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4, and reduce the power down from negative 1 to negative 2. And again, it's better to write this in a fraction form, so 4 over x squared. Now we want this to be equal to negative 3. To solve this, I times both sides by x squared. On the left hand side, 6 times x squared is 6x squared. The negative 4 over x squared times x squared, well the x squareds will cancel, so just take away 4. And on the right hand side, negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Now we'll add 3x squared to both sides. If you add it to the left, you get 9x squared, take away 4 and if you add it to the right you get 0. Now you should recognise this as the difference of two squares, in which case we can factorise to 3x plus 2 and 3x minus 2 equals 0. This gives us two solutions, the first bracket gives us x equals negative 2 thirds, and the second bracket gives us x equals positive 2 thirds. To start this question we'll just find dy by dx, when you have a x cubed, the a is just a constant, so if you differentiate it, you get 3a x squared. When you differentiate negative 4x, you get negative 4. We're told in the question the rate of change of y with respect to x is equal to 17. So this gradient function, 3a x squared minus 4, needs to equal 17. But we're told that this is at the point when x equals 1. So we can substitute x equals 1 into this. So 3a times 1 squared, take away 4 equals 17. 1 squared is just 1, so this is 3a take 4 equals 17. If you add 4 to both sides, then 3a will equal 21, and divide both sides by 3, then a will equal 7. In this question, we'll first of all rewrite the equation, so where it says a over x, we'll write that as ax to the power negative 1. Now we can differentiate, so dy by dx. x squared will differentiate to give 2x. We do negative 1 times negative a, which is positive a, and then reduce the power from x to the negative 1 to x to the negative 2. We can write a x to the power negative 2 as a over x squared. Now we want this to be equal to 16 because we're told in the question the rate of change of y with respect to x is 16, but we're told that this happens when x equals 5, so we can substitute x equals 5 in, so 2 lots of 5 plus a over 5 squared equals 16. 2 times 5 is just 10, and 5 squared is 25, and to solve this we take away 10 from both sides, so on the left we've still got a over 25, and on the right hand side 16 take away 10 is 6, and to finish this times both sides by 25, and you'll get the value of a as 150. For this question we're going to find the equation of a tangent. To do this we'll find dy by dx, x to the power 3 will differentiate to give 3x squared, and the 3x will differentiate to give plus 3. Now we're told the equation of the tangent is at the point 2, 14, so the x coordinate is 2. So we substitute in 2, so at x equals 2, dy by dx equals 3 lots of 2 squared plus 3. 2 squared is 4, and times that by 3 gives you 12, so dy by dx must equal 15. This tells us the gradient of the tangent at that point is 15. So if we write the general equation y equals mx plus c, we know that m, the gradient, is actually 15, so y equals 15x plus c. Now to find the full equation we need a point on this line. Fortunately we're given one in the question, the point 2, 14. So x is 2 and y is 14. So we'll substitute that in. So replace y with 14, 
and that equals 15 lots of x, but x is 2 plus c. 15 times 2 is 30, and if you solve this you'll get c equals negative 16. So we now have the full equation of the tangent, it's y equals 15x, take away 16. For this question we need to find the equation of a normal. We'll start by differentiating, so dy by dx, x to the power 5 differentiates to give 5x to the 4, and the negative 2x differentiates to give negative 2. Now we want to find the equation of the normal at the point when x equals 1, so we'll substitute x equals 1 in. So at x equals 1, dy by dx equals 5 lots of 1 to the power 4 take away 2. 1 to the power 4 is just 1, and times that by 5 is 5, so 5 take away 2 gives you 3. Now it's important to remember this is the gradient of the tangent at that point, not the gradient of the normal. The gradient of the normal would be the negative reciprocal of this. The negative reciprocal of 3 is negative 1 third. So when we come to write the equation of the line, we need to replace the gradient with negative 1 third. Now we need to substitute in a point that's on this line, and again we've been given one of these, the point 1, negative 1. So let's replace x with 1 and y with negative 1. So negative 1 equals negative 1 third times 1 plus c. Negative 1 third times 1 is just negative 1 third, and if you rearrange this, you'll get c equals negative 2 thirds. So the equation of the normal is y equals negative 1 third x take away 2 thirds. In this question, I'm going to rewrite the equation of the curve as two fractions. So instead of x squared plus 7 all over 4, it's x squared over 4 plus 7 over 4. Now I'll find dy by dx. When you differentiate x squared over 4, you're going to do 2 times 1 quarter, which is 1 half, and then reduce the power from 2 to 1, so it's just x over 2. The 7 over 4 is a constant, so that differentiates to give 0. We need to find the equation of the normal when x equals 1, so we'll substitute x equals 1 in. When you substitute x equals 1 in, dy by dx equals 1 half. So the gradient of the tangent at this point is 1 half. But again, we want a gradient of a normal here, so we need to do the negative reciprocal. So if we come to write our general equation of the line, it's not going to be y equals 1 half x plus c, it's going to be y equals negative 2x plus c. Now we need a point on the line. We have an x coordinate of a point on the line, but not the y coordinate. So we'll substitute our x coordinate, which is x equals 1, back into the original equation of the graph, y equals x squared plus 7 over 4. So when x equals 1, y would equal 1 squared plus 7 over 4. 1 squared is just 1, and 1 plus 7 is 8, so we have y equals 8 over 4, which just gives you 2. So the coordinate that's on the line is x is 1 and y is 2, so it's 1, 2. Now we can substitute these points back into our equation of the line to find out the value of c. So x is 1 and y is 2. So we'd have 2 equals negative 2 times 1 plus c. Negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2, so we've got 2 equals negative 2 plus c, which gives you a c value of 4. So the full equation of the normal is y equals negative 2x plus 4. For part b of this question, we're going to need the answer from part a, so the equation of the normal was y equals negative 2x plus 4. We need to find when this normal intersects the curve that has equation y equals x squared plus 7 over 4. They will intersect when they're equal to each other. So if we write x squared plus 7 over 4 equals negative 2x plus 4 and solve this, we'll find the x coordinates. To solve this times by 4 on both sides, on the left the 4s will cancel, so you've just got x squared plus 7, and on the right hand side negative 2x times 4 is negative 8x, and 4 times 4 is just plus 16. Now if we get all of the terms on the left hand side, so add 8x and take away 16 from both sides, we get x squared, we add 8x so it's plus 8x, and then take away 16, so 7 take away 16 gives you negative 9, and this equals 0. We can factorise this, it's a quadratic, it's x plus 9, x take away 1 equals 0, so this gives us two solutions, x equals negative 9, and x equals positive 1. The point when x equals 1 corresponds to the previous part of the question. We're now interested in the second point where it intersects the line, this must be where x equals negative 9. Now we need the coordinates of this, so we also need a y coordinate, so what we're going to do is substitute x equals negative 9 back into the original equation of the curve. So y equals negative 9 squared 
plus 7 over 4. Negative 9 squared is just 81, so we've got y equals, then you do 81 add 7, which is 88, divide by 4, so we get y is 22. So we found the coordinates are negative 9 and 22. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out what I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.